Hey guys, I'm Ms. Hindi, your campus instructional technologist at the Crowley 9th grade campus and HF Stevens Middle School. I'm uh, bringing you this video today because most of you have received your laptops and I'm sure that you're really eager to go ahead and get started setting things up and uh, using them in your classes. And so this is the first of probably several technology lessons that I'll be bringing to you. This one is just going to be very, very basic. I'm going to help you set up your laptop. We're going to answer some basic questions, set forth some expectations, and give you guys some tips and tricks for um, being able to use your laptop more easily. The first thing I want to let you know is that if you haven't received your laptop already, you don't need to be concerned. All I need you to do at the end of this video is go to the website below, or you can even use your phone to scan the QR code on the screen. And you're going to fill out a little form that's t that will tell me all about, what you, um, about you and what you're missing so that I can get that laptop to you sometime next week, hopefully. Next, I need you to know that I am here to help you. I am an instructional technologist, which means that I am here to help make technology in education easier and help you to use technology for your education. So if you have any trouble with your laptop, I need you to uh, come see me and I can take care of you if you can't log in, if there's something wrong or something breaks, if your laptop gets lost or stolen. We want to make sure that your laptop is working and that it's easy for you to use in all of your classes. I've had some questions. If something breaks, are you going to get in trouble? We understand that things happen, so if something happens to your laptop, something breaks, a key falls off or something like that, I just need for you to bring it to me right away so that we can get you set up with a new one or get that one fixed as soon as possible. If you wait several months and then tell us at the end of the year, oh, it broke back in January, then we won't be able to do anything to help you. So let us know right away. Um, come see me during my office hours and I can uh, get your laptop sent in to get fixed and try to get you a new one. At HF Stevens, my office hours currently are going to be Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. And then at the ninth grade campus, my office hours currently will be Tuesday and Thursday during prime time. What that means is that these are the times that I will normally be in my office so that students can come see me and ask me questions or turn in their laptop if it's broken or whatever they need to do. So these are the times that you can ask your teacher for a pass to come and see me. Outside of these times, your teachers know that you probably won't be asking for passes to come see me because those aren't the times that I'm in my office. So again, at HF Stevens, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 8 to 10. And my office here is in room 112. And at the ninth grade campus, Tuesdays and Thursdays during prime time. And my office there is in the library. We have some expectations for these laptops, so let's go through just a few of them together. First of all, remember that the laptop and the charger do belong to Crowley ISD, and that means that all activity is going to be monitored by the district. If you do something on this laptop that you're not supposed to do, then they will know about it and they'll be able to have me get your laptop from you so that they can take a look closer. Next, you need to make sure that you have your laptop and your charger with you in class every day. It's just like any other school supply. It's not optional. You do need to bring it because your teachers are going to expect you to have it to do your work. In order to protect yourself and others and your device, please don't use your laptop in the hallway or the cafeteria. We want to turn our laptop completely off before we close the lid, and we want to make sure that our laptop is closed and in your bag when you're moving between classes. We don't want to be walking around with our laptop open or carrying it around by the corner or anything like that. During class, you can use your laptop only with the teacher's permission. And if an adult starts to speak, we want to show respect and tilt our screen down so that it's clear that we're not sitting there typing on our laptop uh, while our teacher is talking. If your laptop gets lost or if it's broken, I need you to come and see me during my next office time. So whatever my office hours are for students that week, um, just come see me during that next time. If your laptop is stolen or you think it's been stolen, that's something we need to take care of immediately. So make sure that you tell an AP and Officer Mosley or at the ninth grade campus, uh, tell your officer immediately. And then the next time I'm in my office, just come let me know, ask your teacher for a pass so that you can let me know what's going on 
and we can take care of getting you set up. These laptops are kind of expensive, so we want to make sure that we protect our investment. You can purchase insurance anytime before October 31st. It's not required, but it is very, very recommended. Insurance only costs $25, and that protects you and your parents in case your laptop is lost or stolen. If you purchase insurance and your laptop is lost or stolen, you only have to pay $100 to replace it. Without insurance, if you choose not to pur purchase insurance, then that laptop will cost $350 to replace. So it is a really, really good idea to purchase insurance. You never know what might happen, and accidents happen all the time. The website below um, is where you can go to purchase insurance. It's all online, and I will uh, make sure that you have access to this link outside of this video also. Next, we wanna make sure that we protect our screen. These screens are super fragile, especially in the middle. So when your laptop is closed, we don't wanna be squeezing the middle of the, of the laptop. We don't wanna lean on it, like putting our elbows on it um, and putting our weight on it. And we don't wanna use it as something to write on. So don't use it as a clipboard or a binder to, as a hard surface to write on because this is a fragile device. What you see here is just one of the ways that we can break our screen and it, uh, it makes your entire laptop have to be replaced. Next, we want to make sure that we're protecting our hard drive. Most of us tend to shut down our computers by pushing the power button or just closing the lid and going about our way. But the way that we want to shut down our computer when we're finished using it or when we're moving between classes is to use the Windows button or the Start button. So if you look at the bottom left corner of your laptop screen, you'll click on that start button, click on power and shut down. And then when that screen turns black, that does not mean that the computer is off. We wanna wait for all of the lights on the right hand side of your laptop to turn off before you close the lid. And then you know it's safe to close the lid and it won't hurt your hard drive. Finally, we want to make sure that we're protecting your work. That means that we're going to use OneDrive and Office 365 as much as possible. OneDrive is your cloud storage. That means it's your online storage. It means that if something happens to your computer, you can still access all of your work online. So Office 365 is the online version of Word or PowerPoint or Excel or any of those other um, programs that you use on your computer. By using Office 365 and OneDrive, if your computer breaks, you'll still have access to all of your work because when we get a new computer out to you or when we fix the one that you turned in, you will still have access to it all because it's online, it's on the cloud. However, if you save everything just to your computer, then we won't be able to recover it. When you turn in a computer that's broken, even if it's just like a key or the screen is broken, we won't be able to recover all of that information and all that work that you have on your computer. So make sure that you're always working online, that you're using OneDrive and Office 365. A couple of shortcuts that you can use. Oftentimes I see people using the mouse pad on the laptop and those tend to go kind of slow. And then you have to be very, very exact and click on buttons and things like that. So anytime you're typing something, you can use the tab button that's in the top left corner to go straight to the next blank. If there's a button like OK or Accept or, um, or Continue, a lot of times you can just use Enter, the Enter button for that, and then the Start or Windows button is at the bottom left corner of your screen. That's gonna give you a lot of menus, it'll help you um, to search for things on your computer, and it's also where you go to shut down your computer when you're finished using it. These are several things that you will probably need to log into at some point, and everyone should be getting a technology survival guide paper that has this exact chart on it. So you don't need to write this down or anything. You'll be getting this paper, and that's something you'll want to hang on to. A lot of times we do tend to forget our password. So if you happen to change your password, um, then we want to make sure that you're able to get it reset if you forget it. The way to do that is with our single sign-on. You'll need to go in the first time that you log in to single sign-on. 
It's going to ask you several security questions. Make sure that you remember the answers to those questions. And then if you happen to forget your password later, you won't have to come to me or your teacher to try to get it reset. You'll just be able to go back in and click on forgot your password. And then it'll ask you the questions and let you reset it. This is something that you have to set up before you forget your password though. So please make a point to set this up as soon as possible. This weekend would be a great time to do that. And I'll walk you through how to get there in just a few minutes. Okay, so at this point, we're going to actually start using our computer. Now, those of you who don't have your computer yet, or maybe um, the Wi-Fi is not working very well when we go to set it up, or you're not able to get something to download or you get behind, that's okay. You don't need to worry about that. This video will be available on Blackboard as well as on YouTube, and I'll have some links that you guys can use to get to them so that you and your parents can watch this video again later when you get your laptop or when things are working a little bit better. Having so many people in the school online and on the Wi-Fi at the same time means that things may be running slowly and some people may have trouble getting onto the Wi-Fi. And that's just fine. Just go ahead and watch the video um, and then you can get caught up a little bit later. So if you'll go ahead and turn on your computer and then you're going to probably get a screen that looks something like this, or it may just be a completely blue screen with the clock and the date on it as well. And teachers, if you want to pause the video and wait for your students to get to this point, you can do that now. Okay, so now we're all on this screen. What we want to do is press enter or the space bar or something to get us to the next screen. So that next screen that you're going to see after you press enter or the space bar it's going to be a screen that tells you all sorts of um, user requirements. What this means is every time you log on to your computer, you're agreeing to use the computer correctly. You know what's right, you know what's not okay, so you're agreeing to those terms every time you use the computer. So just remember that. You can just press enter again to, to agree to those terms. And then you'll find yourself on a screen that looks kind of like this. It'll probably say other user or if you're logging on regularly, it may have your name on there and all you have to do is put in your password. So at this point, we're all going to go ahead and log on to our computer. And here's how we log on. Your username is Crowley ISD and then backslash and your ID number. So make sure that you're using backslash, not forward slash. Backslash is right underneath the backspace key and that's the one that we tend to forget about. It will not work if you use the forward slash key. Then you can just press tab to get to the password box. You don't have to fiddle around with the mouse or anything. And then your password is your ID number unless you have changed it. So your computer password is going to also be the same password that you use for your Wi-Fi and your email and several different things. So just take a look at that cheat sheet um, to remember which passwords are all the same. And then you can just press enter in order to sign in. Once you've signed in, you're going to find yourself on a blue window screen. And you'll probably have a couple of icons on the desktop. Yours may be a little bit different than mine, and they may be different than the person next to you as well. Everybody may have um, slightly different things already installed. The first thing that we need to do is to turn on our Wi-Fi. Now some of you have probably already figured this out and that's great and then you can just kind of sit back and wait. If you have not figured out how to turn on your Wi-Fi or maybe you've had some trouble, follow along with me and we're going to turn that on now. So if you look down at the bottom right corner, you'll see this icon right here kind of looks like a quarter circle. You're going to click on that And then we always want to be on Crowley ISD. We don't want to use guest or student or teacher or anything like that. Crowley ISD is going to be the best one, and it will actually automatically connect anytime you're on a Crowley ISD campus, so that's kind of cool. It says secure. That means that I'm not connected to it right now. I'm going to click on Crowley ISD. You may have a box checked that says automatically connect. That's good. Um, if you do, you're just going to leave it checked. If you don't, then that's fine too. Mine doesn't. And I'm going to say connect. 
Now, when you say connect, it may just connect from there, or it may ask you for some login information. If it asks you for login information, it's going to be the same stuff that you put in to log on to your computer, or you can just click the box that says something like, use my Windows credentials or something, and then say, OK. So I'm going to connect here to the Wi-Fi. Once it says connected, then I know that I am on the Wi-Fi. Now, one way um, to fix your Wi-Fi situation if it's not on, if your Wi-Fi is turned off, you can press the function key. That's FN. It's kind of at the bottom left corner of your keyboard. Hold that down and then press print screen. So that's at the very top right. And you may have to press it um, two times in order to turn airplane mode off. When airplane mode is off, then we can have Wi-Fi on. So that's just one little tip that may help you troubleshoot some things. If you're connected to Crowley ISD Wi-Fi, that's great, and you can follow along with me from here. If you're not, again, it's fine. You will have access to this video later, and you can set up your Wi-Fi and continue setting up your computer then. The next thing that we want to do is come down here to the very bottom left corner of the screen. Right here we have our window button or the start button. And right next to that we have a search bar. Now this isn't to search um, like Google and things like that. This is for searching your computer. So if you'll go ahead and click in that box. And we're going to type in or start typing in Software Center. And we don't have to type in very much of it. It's just going to pop up. The Software Center up here is great because these are programs that the district has already said you can download uh, without having to have administrator approval. So these programs are all fine. Anything that you find in the Software Center is fair game, and you can download and install that on your computer. So let's click on Software Center. Some of you guys probably already have Google Chrome installed on your computer. You'll see that it's over here. If you do have Google Chrome installed on your computer already, you don't need to do anything right now. I just wanted to show you the Software Center. If you don't have Google Chrome, let's, I'm going to walk you through getting that. So once you've opened the Software Center, you see up here we're in Available Software. So there's a whole bunch of things that we can download. You'll notice that another one that you can download that we're not going to do together today, but you can get later if you want to, is Firefox. Firefox is another internet browser that will work sometimes um, along with Google Chrome. So if you come up here to the search bar, go ahead and type in Chrome. And it's not going to show up in my list. I already have it installed. But you'll search for Chrome. Then you'll click the little box next to it and then say Install Selected. So when you say Install Selected, you're going to go over to this tab. It's going to take you over there automatically. And then notice I'm installing something else, but it will say that the status is that it's downloading, and it'll tell you kind of how it's doing. So it may take a few minutes for Chrome to install, or it may, um, it may not work right now if we have too many people on the network. Again, that's fine. You'll have access to this video at home, and you can do it anytime um, that you have access to the video. Once it's installed, then you can go ahead and come up here and close out of it. And then you'll see that you have Chrome on your desktop if you install it. The next thing that we want to do is set Chrome as our default browser. That means that anytime you open a website, it will automatically open in Chrome instead of Internet Explorer, or Edge, as it's called on the new version of Windows. So come down here back to the search bar. You can do so much just by using the search bar. Anytime you're looking for a program computer, just go down here and start typing. So I'm going to start typing default. Okay? I'm looking for default programs. And I'm going to click right here where it says Default Programs, and it's going to open this window. So scroll down until you get to the bottom where it says Web Browser, and it probably says Microsoft Edge right now. Just click on Microsoft Edge and change it to Google Chrome. And then you can close out of this. The next thing that we want to do is make it easy to use Chrome when we're using the Internet. We don't want to accidentally be using Internet Explorer or Edge 
because a lot of our programs and a lot of our websites won't actually work very well in that. So if you're ever having trouble with the internet, the first thing I'd like for you to check is what web browser you're using. Come down here to where you have the little E, that means Internet Explorer or Edge, and I'd like for you to right click. So we're not left clicking, we're right clicking. And right here it says unpin from taskbar. So this entire bar at the bottom of your screen is called the taskbar, and we're going to unpin edge from the taskbar. So just click right there. And notice it's going to go away. Then I'm going to come over here to Chrome, and I'm going to right click on that, and I'm going to say pin to taskbar. So I'm going to put this icon down there where edge used to be. If there's anything else that you use a lot that you'd like to pin to the taskbar, you can do that too. So anything that you go to, if you right click, I'll show you again, you right click, go down to where it says pin to taskbar, now it says unpin because it's already there, and if you click that, it'll either put it there or it will remove it. You can also pin it to your start. I'm going to go ahead and do that really quick now. And so now when I come and click on Start, I'll see my Chrome icon right here. So you can put things there too if you prefer it there. And I'm going to go ahead and show you while I'm at it how we shut down our computer. We go click on Start, go to Power, and then go to Shut Down. I actually like to do this without even using the mouse. So you have a little window button on your keyboard I'm going to show you by doing that. I know you won't be able to see it, but I'm going to click on that Windows button. Then I'm just going to do my up arrow twice to highlight power and say enter. And then up arrow twice to shut down, and then you could say enter. So you don't even have to touch the mouse. I know that the mouse can be annoying sometimes because it tends to run slow. Okay, now we're going to do something else. So if you'll go ahead and open Chrome, it's going to take a minute here to open. The first thing that I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and make this full screen. So you can go and click on this box up at the top. It says maximize. That means it's going to use all of the space on the screen. And now I'm on Google, Google Chrome, sorry. Up at the top, we have a few things that we need to all be able to talk about. So here where my cursor is flashing, we can call that the address bar. We can call it the URL bar. So anytime I talk about the address bar or the URL bar, that's what I mean. We're going to click there, and that's where we can type in any website that we want to go to. The next thing I'd like to point out is our tabs. Chrome is great because we can have lots of things open at once if we need to be using those. So here I have one tab open. If I want to open another tab, I can just click right there and open another tab. If you want to close that tab, just click on the X. The next thing that I want to show you is up at the top right corner. Look right here just next to the little star. First of all, if you want to put something in your bookmarks, you can just click that star and it'll give you a bookmark. You can name it. And you can remove the bookmark also. But if you look to the right of it, sometimes you may have pop-ups that come up, especially with things like Skyward. Skyward counts as a pop-up. And so if something's not opening correctly, always look up here and see if maybe a pop-up has been blocked, and I'll show you a little bit later how to fix that. And then we have three dots. This is our settings button. So I'd like for everybody to go ahead and click on settings. Notice what you can do. You can go to your settings right here. You can go look at your internet history. If you accidentally close something that you didn't want to or something like that, you can zoom in and out on your screen. You can get to your bookmarks. There's lots of things that you can do here. 
So that's your settings button. So the first thing that we're going to do is go to the Crowley ISD homepage. So I need you to type exactly with me. When we have websites, we never put spaces in the website and we have to spell everything exactly right. It, it's not smart enough to know what we mean to say. It has to be exactly what we want to say. And you don't have to have any capitals or anything like that. So what I'm going to type in here is Crowley ISD TX dot org, o -R -G. Crowley ISD TX dot org. And then just press enter. This will take you to the Crowley ISD homepage. And then notice we have a button right here at the bottom that says parents and students. So that's what we want to click on. You could also scroll down and see some other stuff on the homepage. But we're just going to click on parents and students. And then it comes up with this big long menu and it's alphabetized, which is really helpful. So we're going to scroll down and we're going to see if there's anything on here that we really need. There's a few things that we do need, actually. So I'm going to come over here. First, you know what? I kind of want this tab to be one of my home pages. I want this to come up every time I open Chrome. So come up here to the top. We're going to duplicate this tab. We're going to open another one just like it so that we can do stuff in that tab. So on that tab, right click and say duplicate. I'm going to go through that again. Come up to this tab, right click, duplicate. Now I have two of the exact same tab. I'm going to scroll down to the B's and click on Blackboard. Blackboard is a good thing to have bookmarked. That's a good thing to open every time our internet opens. So go ahead and leave Blackboard open. Leave that tab. Let's come back over here, because now you had two of them, right? Come back over here. We're going to duplicate this again. Right click, duplicate. So what is something else that we want to have access to? I think Skyward is pretty important. So I'm going to find the S's and click on Skyward. And then let's come back over here and see if there's anything else that we need to open up. You have access to the school calendar here. You have access to um, technology resources. If you click right here, this will take you to technology stuff. You can find the final exam schedule at the end of the semester down here for middle school. You can find the dress code. There's all kinds of things that you can find. If you had a charger last school year that wasn't turned in and so you need to pay that fee, you can come here to online payments. So there's a lot of stuff that you can get to just by coming to this parents and students tab. So right now you should have three things open. You have parents and students, you have Skyward, and you have Blackboard. And we're going to go ahead and open one more tab. So come over here to the right, click on this new one, and we're just going to have Google open. So go ahead and type in Google, google.com. So now we have four tabs open. Now there may be some other things that you want to have open as well every time you open the internet and that's fine you can go in and you can change this later but for right now let's go ahead and just set these as our home pages so we're going to come back over here to the settings button those three dots at the top right click on that and then come down to settings so i'm going to click on it again so that you can see where i went top right click on the dots go down to settings and click on that it's going to open a new one a new tab that's fine.
and we're going to look at this part right here that says on startup. That means every time you open Chrome, this is what's going to open. So click on the bottom option that says open a specific page or set of pages, and then we want to set those pages, so click right here. It'll open a new little box, and you're going to click Use Current Pages. Watch what happens when I click that. The four tabs that I have open show up automatically, and I'm going to say OK. Something else that you can do is scroll down to the bottom, and if you did not set Google Chrome as your default browser, you can do that here. It'll either tell you that it is your default browser or it will give you the option to set it as your default browser. Notice that at the very bottom you can click on Show Advanced Settings. So we can go in and we can take care of our pop-up blockers from here. We can manage our downloads. All of that. So I'm going to come up here and close out of my whole internet window. I'm going to show you what happens now when I open the internet. Notice I'm opening Chrome, and now all four of those tabs are going to open so that I don't have to go and try to remember what the Crowley website is or type it in every time. All of them will open. Let's go over here to Skyward, and we're going to start uh, by logging in. So your password should be, or your, I'm sorry, your login is CISD, or Crowley ISD, and then your ID number, and then your password is 12345, unless you changed it. So your Skyward password is separate from all of your other passwords. If you change your Skyward password, that's the only thing that's going to change. So I'm going to log into mine here. And then you can just press enter to sign in. Oops, I put in the wrong one. Hold on just a second. Again, just press enter to log in. All right, so this is what I want everybody to see. I'm going to do this one more time. Your login ID is CISD, and then your ID number, no spaces, no capitals or anything. You can press tab to go to your password. And then your password is 12345, unless you changed it. And then just press enter. So the next thing that you're probably going to see pop up is this pop-up blocker warning. What that means is a lot of websites will use pop-ups as ads, and some of them can damage your computer. And so Chrome has an automatic pop-up blocker built in. It won't let any pop-ups open. Unfortunately, Skyward requires pop-ups because it's a new window that's opening. So don't just sit here and click retry over and over and over again because that'll get really annoying and you'll be frustrated every single time you go into Skyward. So instead, remember that pop-up blocker that I told you about at the top right, right up here. We're going to click on that and we're going to tell Chrome that it's always okay for Skyward to open pop-ups. So here, this is selected we're going to choose this option and then say done. Then you can say retry and it'll go ahead and open. And your Skyward will look different than mine and that's okay. You can maximize it, you can leave it like this. And I hope to have a future training on Skyward to show you all the cool things that you can do with Skyward to make sure that you're keeping up with your grades and your classes and everything. So now I'm gonna go ahead and close that. Now, if this works correctly, the next time I go to log in, there's no pop-up blocked. It just opens by itself because I've changed that setting. Let's come over here to Chrome and go over to Blackboard. Looks like there's kind of bad weather right now as I'm recording this, so it looks like Blackboard isn't coming up, 
but you can log into Blackboard. Your username is just your ID number and your password is also just your ID number. So, and you can change your, uh, your Blackboard password and that's just like Skyward, it won't affect all of your other passwords. So your computer, your Wi-Fi, your email, and your single sign-on will all have the same password, but Skyward can be different and Blackboard can be different and that's just fine. So I'd like to remind you that if you have not yet received your laptop, I'd like for you to go today, if possible, and either scan this QR code, and I'll have this be the last thing that's up so that you can scan that, or go to this website and fill out that form completely to let me know that you still need your laptop. I'd like you to only fill out that form one time, because if I get duplicates, then it's going to make my list longer and I'll be confused about who needs what. So just do it once. Also remember that I'm here to help you. My office hours at HF Stevens in room 112 are Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays from 8 to 10 a.m. and Tuesdays and Thursdays during prime time at Crowley 9th grade campus in the library. And of course these could change and there may be times where I have to be gone during those times, but these are the times where I'm going to make every effort to be available to students. And these are the times that your teachers know that you might be asking for a pass to come to my office. Make sure that you have a pass before you come. If you have a pass, I will be happy to sign your pass and put the time on there before you go back to class. And then I will also make this video available. It will be on Blackboard. It will also be on YouTube. And I'll see if I can find maybe a QR code or something like that to post so that you can get to this later on and so that you and your parents can go through this video if you need to. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to come see me during my office hours. And I'm here to help you remember that. And so I, am, uh, I hope to see you all around soon. Thanks, have a wonderful day.